The internet has been accused of wrecking many things over the years. The record industry, blockbuster video, travel agents, roadmaps, empathy, civilized debate and porno mags. One thing it hasn't killed though is a conspiracy theory. In fact, the internet is breathing new life into some crazy ideas that have been doing the rounds for centuries. Do not let them normalize pedophilia. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much. How QAnon rips off the oldest conspiracy theory in the world. On the face of it, QAnon is a Trump-era conspiracy theory. It's basically an ever-expanding web of madness designed to make Trump look as if he's fighting a secret global movement of evil child killers. from Hollywood! You are unnoticed! QAnon is so famous now that even your gran knows about it. In fact, that's basically the problem. Your gran loves QAnon and so do all her Facebook friends. But QAnon isn't as new as you'd imagine. It's basically a version of every old conspiracy theory. And at its heart is a thing called the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, the most damaging conspiracy theory in history. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion is a hundred year old book. It's a book that was read by Hitler and a book that inspired the 9-11 terrorists. It is perhaps the most dangerous book ever published, a crazy lie that has hung over the head of every single Jewish person ever since. The book claims to be a real record of a secret meeting. In this secret meeting, powerful Jewish people plot to take over the world, secretly start wars, manipulate banks and media, and form an eternal one world government. Obviously, this is an insane racist fantasy. The Protocols was proven to be a hoax in 1921. It was most likely the work of the Russian Empire's secret police, looking to whip up support for the Tsar by scapegoating a minority, in this case, Jewish people. Despite the fact that the vast majority of European Jews lived in abject poverty, the existence of a few wealthy Jewish families was spun into conspiracy theories of an insular and self-interested Hebrew cabal to control the world. This is all clearly an insane lie. Unfortunately, the world is a very racist place, so plenty of people were happy to believe it. When the Protocols was published, it was followed by a wave of violent mob riots that led to thousands of Jews being killed. And in America, Henry Ford, the guy who made Ford cars, gave away half a million copies for free. More recently, Colonel Gaddafi and Hamas are among those who've used them to bolster anti-Semitic resentment in the Middle East, and it was even the inspiration for a major Egyptian TV series as recently as 2012. <laughs> The lies of the protocol spread so widely that its central idea of a secret evil group ruling the planet is now fairly common. It is the center point for many conspiracy theories, especially QAnon. QAnon Gospel claims that the world is run by the families of Hillary Clinton, who isn't Jewish, George Soros, who is, and the Rothschilds, who are as well. Q says that they run the media, control the banks, invent wars, and want to start a one world government. Sound familiar? Wake up! Save the children! Wake up! But what about QAnon's claim that these powerful people also drink the blood of children? Well, child murder isn't directly in the protocols, but it is based on a dark lie which goes hand in hand with the protocols, blood libel. Blood libel is the ancient racist myth spread by the Christian church that Jewish people brutally murder Christian children in order to use their blood in religious rituals. And this is exactly what QAnon claim the Clintons and their secret society do as well. Except in the Q story, killing children is about adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is a mystical chemical that Q followers claim flows through children's veins that the evil elites drink to get high. 
actual scientists have never seen massively fussed about adrenochrome, but Western counterculture has been mythologizing the stuff ever since Aldous Huxley wrote about it while off his face back in 1954. In A Clockwork Orange, Alex and his gang of sociopaths neck pints of milk laced with adrenochrome between bouts of ultraviolence. And in Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the character Dr. Gonzo claims it only works if you get it from the adrenal gland of a living human body. There is conspiracies that the coronavirus is a cover-up for what is truly happening right now. Even over in England, they say that the Queen has been taking this to outstand and live a longer life, and it's said to give you eternal youth. During coronavirus lockdown, QAnon assumed that many celebrities were looking less glam than usual because the pandemic was cutting off their supply of young blood, causing them adrenochrome withdrawal. Do not let them normalize pedophilia. Kill Bill Gates! Kill Bill Gates! Are you yeah, gonna yeah, I am. I am. Yes, I am. I think we're all QAnon zero, most of us. They take right. children and they sacrifice these exactly. children. Where we People in power want their subjects to fantasize about shadowy elites that don't exist. That way, they're not questioning the power structures that do. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. You are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, <laughs> if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put myself out there. And we are, actually. Some leaders are so bad, so full of lies, their followers have had to believe in a legion of secret pedo-vampire societies in order to make their leader look like the goody.